How has how has COVID changed the people coming? Did people not come at all? Did did you see different groups of people using uh, the lighthouse here, or or is there no real change? No, there's been there's been a lot of changes, and I I would say the changes have been more on the BLM side of things than on the the our visitor side of things. Hmm. So, uh, BLM was really proactive about COVID. We were shut down for about a year while everybody's kind of trying to get a handle on what was happening. Shut down for public. You mean. Yeah, shut yeah. down for the public. Well, and even for us, we were BLM still is on maximum telework. Um, so if I don't have to be here, uh -huh. then I am working from home. Oh, okay, okay. Um, we also modified our tours in an effort to kind of change that. So our tours used to be a, a guided walking tour for about two hours. So you would be with a docent or one of our staff who would be interpreting the site for you over the course of those two hours. But that meant that there's a group of 15 plus people hanging out in close quarters with one of our guides. A lot of our volunteers are 70 year olds or, over, or above and they have other health issues. So we were trying to avoid that. Um, so we modified the tours to more of an open house format. So they now are smaller groups reservations only versus just walk up which is what we used to do so there's no more cash handling or any of that um they are still with a docent but always outside the talk is maybe 15 20 minutes long and then they're released into the wild to go explore the vegetation <laughs> on their own and we have docents kind of scattered around to answer questions they have them. um the feedback from a lot of our volunteers was sort of mixed but the public seems to really prefer that they have, they're offered a lot more freedom really but yeah i'm Torn. I, I personally would hate to go on a two-hour tour. It sounds like misery to me. But our two-hour tours were awesome. So, so that piece of it is kind of interesting because people are missing a lot of really great information. But at the same time, I totally understand having somebody talking for 30 minutes is, is fine. Right, right, right. And what about the, the, the people that have come? Is it has the, have the people changed? Probably fewer international people, but but is has the is it like younger people trying to get out for the day or what? What um, you know, is so we. We've had more younger people. I don't know how much of that has to do with COVID and how much of that has to do with the difference in the format. Interesting. Older people tend to be a lot more comfortable with a more formal tour. Right, tour right, right. It's much more conducive to young families coming out. Little kids do not like two-hour tours, um, also understandably. Um, so that piece of it changed a little bit, but the castle's been shut down this whole time. Um, and that always changes our level of visitation. Um, a lot of people, are here specifically to go to the castle. They may not have done their research to find out that it was closed, um, but now we're getting people that are specifically here to visit the light station. So that's kind of shifting. So numerically, it's down the, the, the number of visitors. We're actually seeing more visitation. Than oh, really? We did. Yeah, yeah. So we normally would see anywhere from 20 to 40 people on a Saturday or a busy day, and then anywhere from four to 40 people on, during the weekdays. And we, our reservations are maxed out at 45. We're not allowed. Legally, as far as BLM is concerned, have more than 50 people out here at the time. Um, so, but we've been filling up almost every single day of tours since we reopened. Wow. March. So yeah, it's it's been it's it's dropped off a little bit, which is just normal right before Thanksgiving. And then we'll be slammed afterwards. It'll drop again right before Christmas, and we'll be slammed afterwards. So, um, the reservations have been really helpful. I know, you know, I fought against it forever because I am a spontaneous sort of. This sounds interesting. Um, <laughs> But it's been super helpful for us to both manage visitation, but also to manage our volunteers. So at this point, if I notice that like on a Tuesday, we're only gonna have 10 people out here, but I have six volunteers signed up, I can get a hold of them and let them know that, you know, if you wanna come out, great, but you don't need to. And that's really helped because our volunteers have dropped off considerably. Um, some have retired, some have their own health problems. A lot of them are taking care of grandchildren while their parents are working right. or taking care of their partners or parents. So. Um, I had like 30 volunteers on a regular basis and I'm down to about 12 or more people. So that's kind of made a difference too. Mm -hmm. And I don't have all our interns this year. So it's, it's interns of, because of COVID, no interns or other and reasons. Various other okay. Okay. Things. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, okay. initially COVID now it's just bureaucracy. And were you guys, did you, with the sort of COVID break or pause or whatever the term is, were you guys able to catch up on anything that you'd not been able to before? Like, was there any, was there any upside, I guess? Yeah, yeah, so that that was kind of interesting. I was, um, my, my boss was able to take a detail. So within the Bureau of Land Management and other federal agencies, you can take temporary work assignments in other locations. And because we're an agency that's across the country, that can be really anywhere. And so my boss took a detail up in Northern California. So somebody came in to detail behind him and Jesse's specialty is in sort of, um, I'm not 
English, like media kinds of things. So he actually works for a state office in the public mm. affairs department. Mm. And he helped to create um, a video that we're going to be using in the open format tours. Oh, cool. um, we just have some final edits to do. And then also created um, this really cool sort of informational brochure. So when people first arrive, they're given a map and some information to take with them as they're cruising around once they're done with their dose and introduction, which has been nice. Also needs some some upgrades, but yeah, both things that we've talked about for a gazillion years and we never have any time right. to, to do. So yeah, it did allow us a, a lot of freedom in that sense. We were able to get to, it's hard to tell now, but almost every single building with the exception of the lighthouse got to be painted during the course of that time. Um, I had reached out to a former intern and his girlfriend. He had just graduated with his master's in North Carolina right when COVID hit. And I knew they were coming back to California and I knew he didn't want to live with his girlfriend's parents. <laughs> <laughs> And I, he's by far one of the most amazing and valuable interns we'd ever had. And I um, asked him if he'd be willing to take a short-term contract, just being a lighthouse caretaker while we were closed for, for COVID. And so he and his girlfriend ended up um, really caring for this place in a way that had them in a really long That's time. cool. Yeah. That's it. That's a pretty sweet gig. If you, yeah. if you have to ha hang out somewhere in the middle of a pandemic, uh, that's like pretty cool. Surfing every morning and doing trail work and then surfing every afternoon. That's, that's cool. cool. That's cool.